Hey guys, welcome back. So, a lot of you guys have requested a solar update, so that's what I'm going to do today. So, a lot has changed since I think my last solar video. So, here's what we got now. So, originally we had 1600 watts on panels on this over here. Now we have 4000 on these and 4000 watts on that one. So, I think I had the structure built or at least the poles in last time, but now we got that. So 8,000 watts currently total at max capacity on a perfect day. That's what we got so far. So there, there is plans to make a bigger array, practically double this, but this is what we got for now and it's been working awesome. So we have and I'll show you what we all have in the basement as far as our inverters and batteries so far. So these are both for the high inputs on our, my two inverters that we got right now. And I've actually seen it when it's a little cooler out, when it's in the 40s and 50s, and if it's a perfectly clear day, both of these will pull over 4,000 watts. I've seen like 4,100 on each of these. And surprisingly, yes, these are 400 watt panels and these are all 100 watts. When you look at the stats on them, they're actually pretty close. I mean, I haven't seen a huge difference either or what produces better or anything like that. So I'm pretty happy with those and the smaller ones. So, but yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward as far as the panels go. So let's get into the the hardware of the actual you know solar setup that we have here so let me uh get back to the house which is roughly 500 feet away because that's how long the wires are and uh, we'll get into it okay here we go so as you can tell we got two inverters so these are the ecoflow ultra units and each one has three three batteries we got six total so that's 36 kilowatts of storage if they were to be full, obviously the smart home panel two, which runs our whole house. So currently, as you can see, this unit here is pulling 1080, an output of 201, 217. This one's bringing in 956 and outputting 235. So they're sharing the load. So 236, 220. It's really based off of the percentages of the battery. So if this said like 60%, this would have probably almost 400 output or this one would be like at 100. Because what they do is they try to, they work together to share the load to preserve the battery equally, depending. So now, must be pure sun out there. 30, no, well, 3,000 watts, 3,000 watts, so. So that's our setup currently what we have obviously we still have room for a, a third inverter and input coming in we do not have that yet maybe one day we'll get a third one with more batteries so so currently we've had this the way it is right now i would say for the last i don't know six months i think last six months with those panels out there and it has worked awesome. Now that we have 8,000 watts coming in, the extra batteries, there were probably three months straight, we were 100% off the grid. That was before, now that it gets, it's hot out, you know, we're in July, before the, the air was running. I mean, that takes a lot of energy. We keep our house at 70, 24-7 uh, throughout the summer so that draws a lot of power this handles that no problem we can still operate like normal um but before that like i said we were 100 percent off grade we we're, we still are for most of the most of the time it's just that when the air is running overnight it, it'll deplete the batteries and it automatically goes back to the grid the only way to take care of that would be to have like i said the third inverter and more solar coming in before we had the AC running, these units would be 100% full of battery storage while being off the grid by like 11, 11 a.m. They'd be full. So it just goes to show you, if you don't have a lot of electricity usage, you probably don't even need what we have here. This is a good setup though. 
But if we would have had, you know, a couple more batteries, we would have had way more storage. We still get full on, on in these summer days. It's it's pretty rare though, depending on it's been really hot and humid, so it's been drawing a lot. But other than that, zero issues whatsoever. Smart home panel two works great. The app is awesome. Um, we did end up getting the like I guess you could call it like their tablet. It's called the Power Insight. I have it set up upstairs, so like in the evening, I can just walk past it. It'll tell me, and I'll show it to you. It'll tell me exactly everything that the app would. I don't have to come down here. I don't even have to pull my phone out. It actually gives you a little bit more info on that. It'll tell you everything that you need to know right there, which is awesome. So I'm very glad that I chose what I did. I mean, it works it works as advertised i mean once you have the smart home panel on her that's really like the biggest difference i mean there's no manual transfer switch it automatically does it now if you did have a storm you can have it set up where the smart home panel prioritizes certain circuits that if the batteries gets to a certain percentage you can set all those parameters that it'll turn off your non-essentials where if you wanted to just have like you don't need the air or depending on how cold it is heat if you're out of power and you only got so much power left you know um you could have like your well pump you know you keep your freezer on it or your fridge and just run you know maybe a couple lights you can have it do all that or you could just have it do it all that's how i do it because we usually have plenty of battery it doesn't matter i just let it run and let me tell you, on those three months that we were 100% off grid, our bills are usually three to four hundred dollars. Those three months, it was only like thirty bucks, and that's just because you still get charged for hookup for natural gas. You still get charged for a hookup to our power company at least, and it averaged out to about thirty dollars. So, but I'm okay with the thirty bucks, knowing that I'm not spending over three hundred. Now, you do that every month, you, you, we will recoup our money within a couple of years, so, which is huge to me. Um, it's, it's worked out very well. I'm, obviously, to add batteries, it's expensive, but that peace of mind, I mean, it, it's so easy to do. So if we got an extra battery, like, say, tomorrow, all you literally have to do is turn it off, disconnect a couple like these big, big, big cords, right? Lift it up, put the battery on there, reconnect it like how these are set up, plug it back in. I mean, as soon as you get the battery, you could have it hooked up, ready to go within two minutes. Yes, they're heavy batteries. They're over 100 pounds. The inverter's like 90. You just Two people can do it. They got handles on both sides. Pick it up, put it down, plug it in, and you're that's it. That's all you got to do. So... And I think they're very good looking units. And obviously we got room for a third one. The cord's very long. Plug it in and it, it does its thing. You know, and, and to add another one is going to be huge because now they all share the load. Batteries are getting depleted less as long as you got the input. So my future plans are I got to run, what, four more sets of wires? Yeah. Yep, four more sets because I want to get the low input on these two units and the low input and high input on the third inverter whenever we get that so at some point this year i'm going to run all the wires that way i have everything that i need it's all set up so whenever i do get it all i got to do is hook it up yes i still got to get more panels to put them up and so on and so forth but we're building the system out that's what's nice about this because originally my previous video all i had was the one inverter with one battery and we had this and it'll it still saves you money right off the get-go especially if you have the smart home panel because it'll flip back and forth and then you still got a backup and you can set the percentage so if you did lose power you still are off the grid with this you know at least for a while now we have a lot of storage backup that we can last quite a long time if we had a huge storm come through and say it was cloudy for a long time so but look at that 3600 there 200 going out until the air turns on then that'll change but 3300 there so phenomenal units absolutely and they're portable so say we sell down the road obviously the smart home panels now we could take these with 
or if we go to a, one of our if we had a cabin somewhere remote we could bring one of these setups plug it into the to the cabin and you're good to go so but yeah let me show you my, our power insight that we have in the living room that we can check on later at night if i choose to when i'm working all day i can just look at it real quick when i get back home but yeah let me show you that all right guys so this is the power insight so this right the first screen it shows 16.6 that's how much solar we have generated today that's how much we've used today so far 25.5 currently and at the current usage of power the next screen will show how long the battery will last what and that's with how much solar we're bringing in so that's a little deceiving now when the solar goes away later at night this number will change you just scroll up so here hopefully you can see this so this right here shows how much solar we got bringing in right now we got 12 circuits using 360 watts shows the first inverter second inverter the battery percentage and how many watts they're currently putting out so here let's go to a month that we were a hundred percent off grid come on oh, i'm going on the days hold on go to the month and this is cool because you can see everything So here is when the daylight started getting better. This is in April. Shows you how much battery we use that whole month and how much grid power. So yeah, we only used 31 kilowatts that whole month on the grid. The rest was from the battery. That was April. May, almost the same result, 511, 31. June, now here's in June, we used 739 kilowatts of battery, 200 on the grid. And most of the time, as you can tell, here's where the air started kicking on. And I'm sure we could go down. Yep, so the air used 245 kilowatts, and that also uses the furnace, which is 126. So it kind of breaks down everything. The dryer, 88 kilowatts. So it's pretty nice, and you can do it per day as well, what everything used. And it's all right here at the touch of your fingers. So, And it'll be nice once we have a third one there but yeah that's it if you guys have any questions let me know um the eco flow has been running awesome pretty excited about it pretty happy with my decision to have that so yeah if you have any questions shoot me a message um put a comment down below subscribe if you're not i'll have more solar stuff coming in in the future here because we're going to keep expanding so but as always guys keep burning